Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Jessica Cox's air coop damaged by jet blast at JFK. Finally, Starliner launches to space station. Fast, USAF tests hypersonic weapons successfully. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Jessica Cox's air coupe damaged by jet blast at JFK. A Model C air coupe N26R owned and operated by Jessica Cox of Right Footed International and motivational documentary Right Footed was almost destroyed in the brief minutes it sat on the ramp at the John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York. The source of the destructive force was a business jet performing a 360 degree turn in the vicinity of the air coupe. Ms. Cox had arrived at JFK earlier that day, having previously made arrangements to facilitate the logistics of arrival and parking in preparation for an outreach event, only to discover upon marshalling to parking and shutdown that no tie-downs were available in the designated area. Ms. Cox and her instructor exited the aircraft, proceeded indoors for a quick bio-break intending to resolve the tie-down issue. By the time they returned, the air coupe had sustained road rash to its right wingtip as the thrust of the private jet performing its about face tipped the air coupe to the ground and swung it around about 30 degrees while it pivoted on the right main gear. What I learned from this experience is no matter where you are, tie down your airplane, even if they don't have tie downs, find a way. Even if you're just going to the bathroom and running in to just go for a quick bathroom break and come back, make sure your airplane is tied down. Insurance is sorting it out, but the bill is expected to be about $9,000. And after the break, CAF's B-25 Miss Mitchell suffers engine trouble. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at aviationsafetyresources.com. In time and aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some other interesting stories. CAF's B-25 Miss Mitchell suffers engine trouble. Last week, the maintenance team of the Minnesota Wing unfortunately discovered critical engine damage on their assigned B-25 Miss Mitchell. The team took swift action to repair it. Over the weekend, they further discovered that the engine will not be able to be repaired by their maintenance team, but will require a full engine overhaul at an overhaul facility. Sending the engine out for repairs adds additional costs and time to the repair project. A funding drive to restore Miss Mitchell back to flight status has started. Female Centenarian undertakes celebratory skydive. Raymond Sullivan of Sebastian, Florida, by way of the United Kingdom, took to the skies to commemorate her 100th birthday by participating in a tandem skydive. Miss Sullivan, a nurse who had served on the front lines during World War II, had probably done most everything else to this point and thought the skydive would be great if she ever hit 100. Ms. Sullivan is reported as saying, quote, I've done a lot of things in 100 years. I thought I must do it while I can, end quote. USAF races to recruit drone pilots. The United States Air Force and the Drone Racing League have apparently expanded their efforts to accelerate the recruiting and training of drone pilots in the hopes of supplying new talent to the USAF. For the past five seasons, the USAF has renewed its partnership with the DRL, capitalizing on the latter's expertise in marketing and attracting talent for its annual first-person view drone racing competitions, where drones equipped with cameras live stream video feed, bringing the remote viewer into the action. South Korea orders 40 Bell 505s. 
Textron has signed a deal to provide 40 of the Bell 505 helicopter to South Korea's military. The deal, part of the Republic of Korea's defense acquisition program, requires the deliveries to be made by 2025 and will be used by both the Army and Navy divisions of the Korean Armed Forces. Earlier this year, the Bell 505 achieved a milestone 100,000 global fleet hours. It will join Indonesia, India, Jamaica, Japan, United Arab Emirates, and Montenegro in using this helicopter for training. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Finally, Starliner launches to space station. Boeing CST-100 Starliner is finally in orbit, heading for the International Space Station, following the launch Thursday of the Next Generation spacecraft on a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket on a mission designed to test the end-to-end -end capabilities of the crew-capable system as part of NASA's Commercial Crew Program. Starliner lifted off on NASA's Boeing Orbital Flight Test 2 at 6.54 p.m. EDT from Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Following an orbital insertion burn 31 minutes later, Starliner was on its way for a rendezvous and docking with the space station. Starliner is scheduled to dock to the forward port of the station's Harmony module at about 7.10 p.m. Friday, May 20th. After successful docking, the crew of Expedition 67 will open Starliner's hatch at about 11.45 a.m. Saturday, May 21st. For the flight test, Starliner is carrying about 500 pounds of NASA cargo and crew supplies and more than 300 pounds of Boeing cargo to the International Space Station. Following certification, NASA missions aboard Starliner will carry up to four crew members to the station. And after these messages, FAST, USAF tests hypersonic weapons successfully. Pilot Communications USA is proud to introduce our latest headsets, the Carbon A1 Active Noise Reduction and the Carbon P1 Passive Headset. Carbon Fiber makes our headsets 30% lighter than others, which significantly reduces pilot fatigue. Our Blue Link Hand Control Unit allows you to connect two devices at the same time, and the Record Out capability can send audio to an onboard camera or digital recorder. Get the headset that's so light you may forget you're wearing one at pilot-usa.com. Whether you're charting a steady course or pushing for the ceiling, Hartzell Propeller has been elevating flight for over 100 years. It's in our passion for engineering and research. It's in our dedication to testing the limits of performance and creating propellers that are as safe as they are sexy. Now, together with our dedicated family of companies, we're propelling the future of aviation. We are Hartzell Propeller, built on honor. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit flyskyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Welcome back. FAST, USAF tests hypersonic weapons successfully. A USAF B-52H Stratofortress successfully released an AGM-183A air-launched rapid response weapon, or ARRW, off the Southern California coast May 14th. Following separation from the aircraft, the ARRW's booster ignited and burned for expected duration, achieving hypersonic speeds five times greater than the speed of sound. Quote, this was a major accomplishment by the ARRW team for the weapons enterprise and our Air Force, end quote, said Brigadier General Heath Collins, Air Force Program Executive Officer for Weapons. The 419th Flight Test Squadron and the Global Power Bomber Combined Test Force, or GPB-CTF, both at Edwards Air Force Base, California, executed the test. Quote, the test team made sure we executed this test flawlessly, end quote, said Lieutenant Colonel Michael Youngquist, 419th FLTS Commander and GPB CTF Director. Quote, our highly skilled team made history on this first air launch hypersonic weapon. We're doing everything we can to get this game-changing weapon to the warfighter as soon as possible, end quote. ARRW is designed to enable the U.S. to hold fixed, high-value, time-sensitive targets at risk in contested environments from standoff distances. It will also expand precision strike capabilities by enabling rapid response strikes against heavily defended land targets. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching!